We at Digital Foundry have been critical of cloud streaming in the past, and the reasons are clear. Image quality is degraded compared to the true native playing experience as rendered on local hardware, and more frustrating still, is the fact that your controller input suffers from increased latency with any form of cloud gaming. For competitive shooters, fighting games, or any genre with timing sensitive actions, there is so often this unwanted delay between the button press and the on-screen result. No matter how near or far the servers are, the reality is cloud streaming introduces these two problems, lower image quality and higher lag. So with that in mind, enter Sony's offering, the PlayStation Plus cloud streaming service. Introduced on the 23rd of October 2023 in Europe and a few days later in the US, PS5 game cloud streaming is available to those on the top tier PlayStation Plus subscription, the premium tier. This replaces the PlayStation Now service, which previously only focused on PS4 and PS3 titles. So having PS5 games streamed at 4K resolution no less, is the big breakthrough today. How does it compare in latency and image quality to a true native experience as rendered on a PS5? Secondly, how does PS Plus cloud streaming compare to Xbox's own offering, the xCloud? And lastly, what's the frame rate performance like of each cloud streaming service? Let's find out. So with the intro out of the way, here's a quick primer on how PS Plus cloud streaming works on PS5. The menu design is clear enough, there's a yellow cloud icon next to any supporting game in your catalogue. And whether you have the game installed locally or not, you do still have the option to boot it over the cloud anyway, which is quite unlike Xbox consoles, which remove the cloud option if you already have it installed. In terms of video quality meanwhile, the service supports 60 frames per second at resolutions of up to 4K of course, though a true 4K is only possible on PS5 titles. Which brings us to our first issue with the PS Plus cloud service. We get 1080p maximum for PS4 games and 720p max for anything listed in the PS3 section. This resolution limit for older consoles is a huge shame I think. After all, PS3 games like Eco HD Remaster or Echo Chrome, for example, had the ability to run natively at 1080p, but here, all of that is downscaled to 720p regardless. And on the PS4 side, so many games offered a form of 4K support via the PS4 Pro console, like the 1440p 30fps quality mode in the case of the Shadow of the Colossus HD Remaster. And yet, we're stuck at the base PS4 model's 1080p resolution. That aside, and looking at the service more generally, the audio options are respectable at least. Surround sound support is offered at anything up to 5.1, 7.1, and it even streams PS5's Tempest 3D audio where possible. The first big question then, how does image quality hold up? Is video compression an issue for games? Truth be told, the PS Plus cloud service has a big range of results. There are so many factors to producing the final image. Firstly, there's your internet connection of course. In my case, I'm using a BT fiber connection, 70 megabits per second download and a 20 megabit per second upload, which is more than enough bandwidth for a 4K stream, though your mileage may vary. And more crucially, any contention on the line, supposing anyone else on your network is watching Netflix or YouTube, may affect quality. There may be hitches to the video, or the quality level will take a sudden hit. Even in the best case here, with no one else using my network, there is a second factor to image quality though, the game content itself. If you're playing a simpler 2D game like Monster Boy here, a clean clear game with flat shaded shapes, lots of primary colours, no problem it's at times undiscernible from a true natively installed game. It really holds up, but add in lots of high contrast foliage, lots of movement, play a game like Cyberpunk 2077 with more visually busy areas, and Sony's video encoder may struggle to capture all the detail in a frame. Areas with lots of foliage, meshes, busy texture work, any dark or grey scenes, and especially rainy weather are the usual culprits. So check out this chase sequence early on in Cyberpunk. Let's freeze the frame too to get a good look at the picture. The rain detail against the dark sky is smudged over due to the compression. The texture under the van ahead also loses clarity. For the most part, it will hold up, but zoom close and there are countless examples where the video encoding falls short.
Next up, let's pick a different test case entirely, Fortnite. Here, I'm using the same saved replay on local PS5 hardware versus the cloud PS5 version of the game. It's a more middle ground example this time, not overly complicated by high contrast detail, but still a challenge for Sony's cloud streaming given its rapid 60fps movement. In practice, this almost passes for the real thing, though there are visible limits. Once you enter any foliage-dense spots, the video encoding inevitably breaks up. This grassy field, for example, turns into a bit of a blur, the individual green blades blending into one another due to compression. The illusion breaks in these moments, and if we push the PS Plus cloud encoder with the worst case scenario, a video bandwidth heavy racing game like Assetto Corsa Competizione, it makes for much rougher viewing. Again, this is a saved replay running on local PS5 hardware versus the cloud, giving us perfectly matched gameplay. The grey tones from the overcast weather, the heavy rainfall, the rapid 60fps movement, it all combines to provide an ultimate stress test for image quality. And yes, macro block artifacts fill the space around the car, across the floor textures and the rain in the air. It gives some of the worst results possible with a cloud-based service. Which brings us to the next crucial point, how the PlayStation Plus Cloud compares to Microsoft's own xCloud service. Technically, the xCloud is still in beta, but it's been this way for years and is offered as a perk with Xbox Game Pass. And to be blunt, the Xbox Cloud service, as it stands right now, simply does not compete with Sony's offering. In image quality, it's significantly worse for a start. xCloud appears to run with a maximum 1080p resolution video stream up against the 4K on PS Plus. The bitrate also is significantly lower in step with that resolution target, and it's clearly evident in just about every game you'd care to test. Take A Plague Tale Requiem as an example in its 60fps mode. In this chase across the fields, the native installed PS5 version comes out best, of course. The PlayStation Plus Cloud version, in the middle, puts in a decent result by comparison, but as we've seen, still succumbs to compression artifacts. But the turnout for xCloud on the far right is simply a huge further step down, especially with all the swaying grass, the fire, and the shaded detail of the house ahead, the image is simply prone to much more compression, and this bears out repeatedly across a Plague Tale's richly detailed grassy areas. There's an extra twist to this. Not only is the video stream quality lower on xCloud, but the hardware being used at the server end is not equivalent to an Xbox Series X spec machine. Rather, and despite using a Series X console locally to access the xCloud, in every case, I ended up connecting to an Xbox Series S equivalent console instead. To be clear, this is not specifically a Series S as we know it, Based on our interviews with Microsoft while visiting its Redmond office back in 2020, Series X Silicon is used on the server end for xCloud. It's all Series X, but that processing power is subdivided to virtualize multiple, less powerful Xbox machines. One example Microsoft gave in 2020 is that a single Series X console could be virtualized into four Xbox One S systems, and that subdividing, in theory, helps limit queue waiting times for the xCloud. It's an incredible feat of engineering, and since then, it appears there's been further infrastructure changes based on our testing. Today, we're very much connecting to hardware on a par with a Series S via xCloud. It stands to reason, based on what Microsoft has told us, that it would be a virtualized Series S running on Series X Silicon 2 to service more than one player from a single machine. Regardless, the bottom line is, the end result is indiscernible from an actual Series S machine. In the case of a Plague Tale Requiem, for example, this means three things. Firstly, you get worse performance than playing the game on a true Xbox Series X, more on that in a moment. Secondly, you get the same pruned back visual settings as a Series S machine, with Requiem, in this case, running at a native 900p resolution via the xCloud. And lastly, in Requiem's case, it removes the graphics mode toggle for performance and quality. Focusing on the frame rate point then, interestingly, the Series S version has a bug right now that unlocks the frame rate from its intended 30fps cap. In short, this enables Requiem to run unlocked to 60fps on local Series S hardware, and, by extension, 
on the Series S used on the xCloud servers. The result being we're getting an unlocked 60fps reading using the xCloud and also our local Series S install of the game. Each one is seriously GPU bound of course, but the point is, in comparing these two with their 30fps caps removed, we get this precisely matched 40 to 45fps reading as we run down this hill. In visual settings, frame rate, and functionality, the xCloud version of Requiem is a fingerprint match for the Xbox Series S, all of which is disappointing if you're playing on a Series X. Supposing you want to use the xCloud to quickly sample the performance and settings you'll be actually getting on a Series X, it's just not a representative experience. In fact, it's a huge downgrade from the 60fps line of an actual Series X here, running the game from a local install in its performance mode. There's just no comparison between the two. The settings are lower, the frame rate is lower, and again, we miss out on key functionality in the form of that graphics mode toggle. So where does the PS Plus cloud streaming service fit into all of this? Well, thankfully, it's all very straightforward with Sony's approach. If we boot Requiem, for example, over the cloud, we get the same performance as an actual PS5 install. If we're talking purely in frame rate terms, it's very hard to distinguish this from the real thing. And pitting the cloud streaming services against each other, PS Plus versus xCloud, all of this translates to a huge gulf in quality between them. It's hard to ignore the advantages for Sony's approach here. Let's pick one more example, just to make sure Requiem isn't a one-off. If we boot Resident Evil 2 Remake on the xCloud, for example, and compare it to a local Series S install, inevitably we get the same frame rate readout. Interestingly, the ray tracing mode runs at anything from the mid-20s up to 60fps. It doesn't run at a perfect 60 even on local PS5, Series X or S hardware, making it a seriously handy benchmarking tool in this case. And just like a Plague Tale Requiem, we get this perfectly matched performance profile. Every turn through Raccoon City streets on the xCloud is beat for beat, point for point, the same as a locally installed Series S reading. Even the visual settings for shadows, textures, and alpha effects are a match between them. Now, if we swap over to an equivalent test of the PS Plus cloud streaming service up against a genuine local PS5 install, we're again seeing a near perfect lock between them. We're running at a higher range of 45 to 60 FPS, but crucially, the matched reading proves we're linking up to a genuine PS5 grade machine over the cloud, all of which leads us to the final comparison, how PS Plus compares to the xCloud version of Resident Evil 2 Remake. The gulf in performance again speaks for itself. It's at times a 20fps lead on PS Plus Cloud, alongside the benefits of running at a higher resolution and visual settings. All of this underlines an issue with cloud gaming on xCloud right now. In our case, we connected to a Series S spec machine each time, and this even applied to first-party efforts like Halo Infinite. Much like on a local Series S install, Halo Infinite is running here at a native 1920x1080 maximum on its 60fps performance mode, where we'd expect 1440p on Series X. And then, jumping over to Gears 5, we're running at resolutions like 900p and under, again putting us in Series S territory. The point being, this isn't a problem on PS Plus cloud streaming, where you're guaranteed equivalent to a PS5 experience, at least before the streaming adds compression and latency. Potentially, it's a slight variation of a PS5 spec machine, but the performance level and the functionality of these games is intact. In this sense, the comparison between cloud services heavily skews in favour of PlayStation Plus. There will be cases of hitching owing to interruptions to the stream on PS5, but it's what you'd expect of video streamed over a network. As far as the hardware on the server end is concerned though, we're not being shortchanged by performance. On the other hand, xCloud has serious issues to overcome. On several occasions, in fact, on first booting a Plague Tale Requiem over the xCloud, we got a 30fps cap with uneven frame pacing, after which a reboot of the game gave me the unlocked 60fps performance used in our tests. 
The final question then, how about latency? In terms of display settings, I'm using 60 Hz as the output on PS5, no additional VRR mode selected to keep things simple. And to test the latency, I'm using Nvidia's LDAT sensor. In a nutshell, in Cyberpunk, I measure the response from an input on the DualSense controller to the very first sign of a gun's muzzle flash on screen for the resulting gunshot. And after averaging 100 results between native PS5 gaming and the cloud version, the results are fascinating. On the game's 60 FPS performance mode, we get 88 milliseconds with the native PS5 test, but then 143 milliseconds on the cloud. From input to on-screen response, that's adding 54 milliseconds of latency overall. Controller inputs are noticeably delayed then, and especially so for a game like Cyberpunk, where input lag is hard to begin with in native gameplay. And yes, I did also try the 30fps ray tracing mode in Cyberpunk. It comes out at 147 milliseconds on a native PS5 install, up against 205 milliseconds over the cloud, which makes for a similar 57 milliseconds addition of lag. To compare PS Plus cloud streaming against xCloud Next, I had to dig deep in finding a common ground game on both cloud services. Not so easy, it turns out. Above all, we needed a 60fps first-person shooter with a distinct muzzle flash on gunfire to work with the LDAT sensor. And in the end, I landed on Back for Blood, the Left for Dead spiritual successor. I took an average of 100 samples for each, again, and amazingly, the native installed results massively favor Xbox. We get 84 milliseconds on PS5 versus just 54 milliseconds on Xbox. It's a strange discovery that bears out with snappier controls on Xbox. But the crucial bit is, of course, their relative difference to the cloud version results. Using the same method then, we get an extra 53 milliseconds of latency on PlayStation versus an extra 45 milliseconds on Xbox. Potentially, this is down to my position geographically to the nearest server for each service. But the bottom line is, despite its shortfalls in image quality and a loss of functionality, as it stands, Xbox does have an advantage here. That's the state of cloud gaming on console right now. For the price of the PlayStation Plus Premium tier, overall, Sony's approach has fewer issues. It gives us a more authentic experience in its 4K image and in offering a version of the game that's more comparable to an actual PS5. The higher latency compared to Xbox is a disappointment, but then xCloud's own issues are more glaring. The lower bitrate, the heavier compression, the lack of parity with Series X spec performance, and the lack of a graphics mode toggle in cases like a Plague Tale Requiem, it's simply not on the same level as PlayStation Plus in terms of quality. It's a shame too, because there's a genuine argument for cloud streaming if done correctly. There's an immediacy to booting any game on the PS Plus library, no download needed. Or as a way to dip your foot into the water, so to speak. There's an advantage here. JRPGs and puzzle games are a good fit, like Sea of Stars or Unpacking. It's not an ideal solution, but as a stopgap until you download the real thing, it is a useful option so long as the game played over the cloud is representative of the one you'll play locally on a PS5, it has more value, which is certainly more the case on PlayStation Plus today. Speaking of value, the price of each service has to be mentioned too. The PlayStation Plus Premium tier costs £13.50 or $18 a month, or for those who prefer annual fees, make that £120 or $160 a year. And for that, you currently get 851 games available to stream right away, 201 of which are PS5 titles. The catalogue will vary by region too, but it's an impressive number. And as a bonus, specific additional PS5 titles are available for cloud streaming if you happen to have bought them through the PlayStation Store already. Again, Cyberpunk 2077 is one example. As for Xbox Game Pass, you need Game Pass Ultimate to access cloud streaming, and that sets you back £13 or $17 a month. In exchange, you get access to 402 cloud-ready games, and filtering for Series X and S titles alone, you get 225 games. Of course, each service offers much more beyond cloud streaming for their monthly prices. It's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison in terms of their value proposition. But if we're focusing on cloud streaming alone, between the use of PS5-grade hardware, server-side, and the higher bitrate, 
PlayStation Plus presents its catalogue at a quality level that's much closer to justifying that premium label. But for today, that's all I have. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our patron at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But for me for now, thanks for watching.